This video looks at state transformations. Previous videos then have demonstrated numerous mechanisms for creating state space models to represent systems. And here's a typical state space model. People tend to use the parameters a and b and write x dot equals ax plus bu and the output is defined as a matrix C times the state x. However, Viewers will have noticed by now that a state space model is not unique in that several alternative choices for A, B and C can represent the same system. And implicitly, different choices for A, B and C imply different state definitions. And for many of these, therefore, the states will have no physical interpretation. The purpose of this video then is to look at the relationships between state space models which represent the same system but have different ABC matrices. How do we know if two different state space representations represent the same system or different systems? Here's an example. I've given you two different models, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, and z dot equals a hat z plus b hat u, y equals c hat z. Do these represent the same system? Do they represent different systems? How do I know? So we're going to introduce the concept of a state transformation. And we're going to use a simple state transformation defined using a matrix T, where implicitly T has to be full rank. And we're going to look at the effect of this transformation on a model. So what does this transformation mean? It means we're going to define a new state vector z as being a transformed variant of the, an original state x. So z equals tx. And we can, of course, go both ways. Therefore, it's implied that x equals t inverse z. Let's substitute this transformation in then. So I've got here x dot equals ax plus bu. And if I now substitute in from this relationship here. So wherever I've got x, I'm going to write t inverse z. Then you see I end up with t inverse z dot equals a t inverse z plus b u. What I'm going to do next is pre-multiply the whole equation by t. So you see I've got t t inverse, t a t inverse, and t b. And I note that t, t inverse by definition is the identity. So when I've done that, you'll notice I end up with a new model, which is z dot equals a hat z plus b hat u, where a hat is t a t inverse and b hat is t b. So you can see now that with this definition of a hat and b hat, the system using state vector z must be the same as the system using state vector x. So if the a is related to a hat using this formula, a hat equals t a t inverse, and b hat is t b, then the two represent the same system. And just for completeness, the output matrix has this relationship. You'll see that y is going to be c t inverse z or c hat z. Now, different choices of t can be used to produce different canonical forms from each other, or indeed to specify any state definition that may be beneficial or convenient. However, a common choice of transformation is one which reveals the system's modes or poles. And this is going to be analogous to the diagonal canonical form covered in the previous video. Two state space models represent the same system or this with the same input output dynamics if there exists a full rank t such that the following is true such that t a t inverse equals a hat t b equals b hat c t inverse equals c hat so if we can find a t such this is true then the two systems are the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors then a common transformation to use that is for this um, matrix t is the matrix of eigenvectors of the A matrix. And if we do this, it produces a diagonal form, which therefore separates each di dynamic mode into independent states. So we'll show that now. In simple terms, if you write A as this expansion here, the matrix of eigenvectors, 
times a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues times the inverse of the matrix of eigenvectors. And it's easy to show that this is a generic relationship as long as you don't have repeated roots. And what I'm going to do now is define my transformation matrix T to be W inverse. Let's do that then. So if I'm going to use T equals W inverse, I start with this state space model, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx. And then when I remember my transformation, which was TT inverse over here, TAT inverse here, TB here, when I sub make that substitution, you'll find that a hat is given by W inverse aw, b hat is given by W inverse B, and C hat is given by C W. Now, it can be shown, it's fairly straightforward, that this W inverse A W reduces to a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So we've now got a state space model in diagonal form. So Z dot, there's a dot missing there, equals lambda Z plus B hat U y equals c hat z. So now we've separated the modes into the eigenvectors. And this form can be useful for control design. What next? Let's look at the invariance of behavior under transformation. Given that t is full rank, you can state by inspection that the following must have the same input-output behavior, because otherwise one would end up with an inconsistency in some of the equations you've written. So there's the two equations I've got, and we're saying by inspection they must have the same input-output behavior, because otherwise the implied equations here cannot hold. Now why is that important? It's useful later when we determine behaviors more explicitly, but it also tells us that the modes of behavior you're going to get from this model must match the modes of behavior that you're going to get from this model. And that comes down to the invariance of the eigenvalues, because you'll remember from an earlier video that the modes are governed by the eigenvalues. We know from the previous slide that behavior is invariant, so we expect the eigenvalues to be invariant. And therefore, this is what we expect. But what we'll do now, just for completeness, is we'll show that this must be true. So we expect the eigenvalues of A to equal the eigenvalues of T, A, T inverse. And as long as T is full rank, we'll show that this is true. So here we go. The eigenvalues are defined by solving the determinant of lambda I minus A equals zero. For our new matrix, the eigenvalues will come from lambda I minus T, A, T inverse equals zero. Now what I'm going to do is recognize this identity that t, t inverse equals i. We've assumed that t is full rank, so t inverse must exist. So what I'm going to do is where I've got lambda i, I'm going to replace it by lambda t, t inverse. And why am I going to do that? Because it means that this expression for the eigenvalues of t, a, t inverse can be replaced by this expression here. And what do you notice? You noticed one t there, which can be taken outside the determinant, one t inverse there, which can be taken outside the determinant, and therefore you end up with this is zero if the determinant of lambda i minus a is zero, which is the same as you've got up here. So we've assumed that t is full rank, remember. So remark, if you have repeated roots, you can do a similar analysis using Jordan forms, but that, I, I think, is more of academic interest than offering any new insight, so we're not going to do that. So in summary, we've illustrated how a simple state transformation does not change the input-output behavior. State space matrices for a given system are not unique, so the user can select the states and it's a key word, you can select the states that suit your need. And by inference, you're selecting the A, B, C matrices that suit your need, which are convenient for what you want. And a state transformation that does not change the eigenvalues of the state transformation matrix. Now, the states of a transform system may have no obvious physical interpretation.